welcome you all to today's webinar that is harnessing the power of BIM for landscape design. So today we will be discussing like why do we need a BIM uh, for landscape design as well as like how to proceed with the workflow. So for today's agenda, like uh, so over here we will be discussing it and with me we have our esteemed guest. So I'll shortly uh, introduce him now uh, for the event highlights first i'll be introducing our company so my name is prakriti goel and i'm working in capricorn as bim specialist architecture so this is the full agenda like first our esteemed guest will be speaking and then we will be discussing about the workflow and if you have any questions we'll discuss that right now First of all, I'll introduce uh, I'll introduce to a company that is Capricot as an Arkans company. So as a global company, so we have like uh, uh, different sectors like ME, EMEA, uh, APAC, America. So as a global company, we are working together to help the uh, to help the unleash the ideas for a better future. We are helping our clients to uh, for better future, like uh, to help to unleash the ideas. Right, so we are like forty plus BIM experts. We are uh, like platinum partner of Architect uh, Autodesk. We provide consultations, different trainings, uh, uh, and we provide hardware and softwares. Right, so now I will call uh, our esteemed guest, Architect Minish Pare. He is the landscape architect, graduated from SPA with the bachelor's in degrees and the master's in architecture in landscape architecture he he is the co-founder uh, he is the co-founder of nmp design studio with uh, miss nandita parik so uh, and in the past few years he has accomplished several exceptional projects partnered with professor m paul Friedberg in india uh, now, if I talk about NMP Design Studio, so it is actually a creative team of landscape design and urban planning professionals. This firm aims to create the designs which respond positively to the architecture in terms of style, function, materials and finishes. So, uh, let's welcome all, uh, let's welcome uh, to our esteemed guest. So, Manish Parik, sir, over to you, sir. Uh, we would be, <laughs> we are waiting for your, like, for the ideas that you can, the, that you are sharing over here. Thank you, sir, for coming. Uh, over uh, to can you, you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Can you enable screen sharing for us? Uh, okay, sir. It is enabled. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So I'm co-presenting it with my colleague, Nitisha Gupta, who is a part of my studio team. And actually she is the one who manages uh, all the ground level work with BIM on various projects. So she's with me in the studio right now. Hello everyone. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So we will begin over here, okay? Now you go to the load the PPT. So I'm thankful to Capricot for inviting me over and giving me this opportunity. And I'm also thankful to, I can see about 46 participants have joined in. So thank you for your time. Uh, as a business leader or as a founder of this uh, company called NMP Design, my perspective, understanding and method of dealing with BIM is different from how many of the junior team members will deal with it. So I will bring you my perspective and Nitisha will bring the other side of the story. So that's how we are going to co-present this uh, today's webinar. 
So I am 57 years old and I started knowing and learning about BIM and Revit about one and a half, two years ago. That is when several of our clients started uh, insisting that we do a part of our work in BIM. So I will share with you what my understanding of BIM and Revit is. They are a pair that go together. For architects, Revit is, you can say it's an advanced version of AutoCAD with several, it's something, it's a software in which you draw your drawings in three dimension, but it's something much more and very different. So the major advantage of Revit is that everything is three dimensional. So when you draw a road in landscape or a walkway, you are not just drawing the walkway, you are defining the thickness of the walkway finishing material, mortar, lean concrete, probably compacted earth or some waterproofing or insulation, whatever layers go under it. You go right up to the ground. So if you have a building which has several terraces and there are gardens on the terraces, then you will do all the terrace layers and on the ground floor, you will do the layers which reach up to the virgin ground. So that three dimensional drawing work, review and analysis of a three dimensional drawing constantly as you add to your design layers, which deal with various services like drainage, electrical lines, or design layers, you know, so putting details of various structures, everything happens in 3D. So that in that sense, Revit is more advanced, more sophisticated, a little bit difficult from uh, and a lot of uh, and very different from AutoCAD. So that's my perception of Revit and maybe Prakriti Ma'am and Nitisha will go after me. They may correct me because they, you know, their understanding may be different and mine may be incomplete. So now, what is BIM for landscape architects? BIM is a platform where you, it's like a cloud where you put your Revit drawings with a clear authorization or a clear instruction about who all are your team members who can download it copy it, edit it. Also, any work that your team members do will get automatically updated in your Revit drawings. Just to explain the point, as a landscape architect, when I do a landscape design, the lighting designer starts putting lights in the design. For putting the lights, he uses the original Revit model that landscape office has created. But once he has put the lights, he doesn't have to email or anything to us, or he doesn't have to get on a Zoom call to explain, I have put the lights here, here, and here. When we open our Revit model with the landscape, uh, with the lighting inputs in it, we automatically see all the lights. We also see their puttings. We also see them in 3D. So, you know, pole heights, aesthetic feel of it, etc. everything. So when team working with several other uh, co-designers or co-consultants is concerned, there is nothing which comes close to BIM, BIM and combina in combination with Revit. Now what happens is that we are working in our office, we are updating our designs on a Revit uh, model. And while we are updating it, the lighting designer can see if we are making the walkway bigger, smaller, if we are shifting it from here to there. If you are taking a level up in our road, that person can see it. If there are mounds in the landscape, he can see it. If you plant a clump of trees, the lighting designer can see it and shift his lights accordingly. If he removes some trees, he can see it. So similarly, 
site uh, people, if they have the same level of access, they can keep you know, referring to the Revit model to understand what's going on. So this is a unique facility which keeps all team members informed and in loop and capable of analyzing how their designs are impacting the work of other people. There is also a function by which all the quantification and specifications are fed into the Revit model and they can be extracted at the click of a mouse in one minute. So while making the model is a tedious process, once it has reached a certain level of detailing, uh, you know, extracting the uh, bill of materials with quantities is a fast uh, process. And with changing designs, the revised BOQs can be extracted within a minute every time you make a change. So one doesn't have to go back and subtract the earlier quantities and add the new ones. So there are several advantages of working this, with this system. And uh, I will pass on to Nitisha to explain in more detail. Over to you. OK. I'm going to discuss about the key points which is going to impact in our landscape design when we work in Revit model. Like there are some, what are the key points? First, we can visualize the landscape design intent properly in, in, in a collaborative form, uh, like architecture, facade or structure. We can visualize the landscape design intent in a quick manner. And uh, uh, during the design process, we can check the sub layers, which is impacting in terms of design, like what type of sub layers and what type of fill we are getting in that area. Uh, it's very easy to understand to provide the sub layers. And uh, it's very easy to understand the drainage strategy as well. Like uh, we can quickly resolve the drainage strategy and uh, uh, other landscape details. And uh, uh, it's uh, a very quick resolution to understand the softscape palette as well. Like what type of uh, planting palette can be used in that uh, soil fill area. Uh, these these are the key points when we are generating a landscape design, which we have to consider in our mind, mind that uh, 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 like uh, how the hardscape and softscape thing will work together in a collaborative plan. Go to the slides. And. Uh, In Revit model, we can do the, uh, we can make the models uh, in a different, different uh, uh, slab or topo surface form. So uh, using, uh, there are too many commands to use the uh, sub layer, to make the sub layers like uh, using topo surface or a slab manners. I'm going to show you the some reference images how the Revit can visualize in landscape terms. Like if we are if we are working in a 2D platform, we can easily view the uh, 3D platform together to understand the design intent. Uh, and we can see the comprehensive landscape visual elements like slopes, grading, walls, fences, and planting. How can it work together in a uh, collaborative manner. So it's we can visualize the landscape intent properly in a 3D form. Using topography, uh, if we are working in a very uh, uh, contour site, 
so we can visualize the design intent very clearly in Revit to understand how much cut and fill is required and how the design will implement in that uh, contour site. So it's very easy to work in Revit. How the slopes and grading all things work together and using all the elements. Uh, it's very easy to understand in Revit. And uh, we can visualize the sections uh, in 2D and 3D simultaneously, how this is working together. And in Revit, you can put uh, material description uh, like we always do in a 2D form. Uh, legend, we, we have to create all the things and uh, we have to show all the things in the plan as well. But in Revit, it's very easy to uh, give the nomenclature in type mark and keynotes form and uh, we can easily take the quantities of that material using and if we want to change one type mark or keynotes, it can be changed easily in the entire model wherever we want to change. So it's very easy to work there in Revit. And we can take the quantities for all the items very easily, all, all the finishes and uh, uh, soft scape work. And we can identify the clashes with other stakeholders or internal, uh, like in our internal landscape design classes as well. Like uh, if we are working, uh, if we are working in an open terrace area and there are some uh, structural elements or architecture elements uh, hindering this landscape design intent, so it's very easy to catch the clashes in the model and resolve the design quickly. And uh, it's very uh, easy to understand. Yeah. Next, please. Yeah. So that mostly sums up uh, our understanding and our explanation of how we are benefiting from BIM and Revit. Over to Prakriti ma'am for further discussions. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Minish sir and uh, Natisha ma'am for the amazing like discussion on uh, how the BIM is necessary for landscape. Now, uh, I'll take this further on, like how we can proceed in Revit uh, with upcoming new features. So if I talk about right, Revit 2024, so uh, new features have made the landscape designing much more easier. So how like uh, BIM workflow is, uh, is now faster according to the new versions. So I'll be sharing my screen. Okay, so uh, now BIM part, like why BIM, what is BIM, like what BIM, so everything has been discussed by Manish sir and Nitesh Hamam. So now uh, let's move on with the Revit part, like uh, to enhance that BIM workflow, like where uh, you have all, like where from concept, like if I talk about the project delivery, project life cycle of a landscape project, so from uh, like concept stage to delivery and like construction as well as renovation. So how uh, the workflow is enhanced using the uh, software. So BIM, like if I talk about in Revit, so as you all know, like why do we need Revit? Because it gives you the coordinated, well-coordinated manner. Because if I talk about for landscape projects also, like various disciplines are involved, like landscape architects, uh, MEP engineers, electrical, right? So MEP part. So every uh, project needs to be coordinated, well-coordinated. And it has to be consistent. So it needs to be updated, like... Uh, uh, it needs to be on uh, like updated as well as up to date, right? So 
and computable. So whatever uh, we are providing plantations as well as materials we are providing for hardscapes and softscapes needs to be com uh, computed. So Revit actually gives that. So this part has been covered. Now, like, uh, first of all, if I talk about why Revit again, uh, because we can develop the multidisciplinary model. So if I talk about for landscape projects, so in landscape, we can provide the, uh, like, MAP services, right? So, uh, like uh, plumbing uh, services as well, like electrical services, right? And if I talk about for life cycle of the landscape project, uh, let's talk about the stages of construction for the landscape project. So, first of all, it comes the concept design, detail design, your analysis, shadow analysis and all, documentations, right? Construction, then we go for the operation and maintenance and if they uh, will be demolished or renovated or survey it, right? So everything is divided into two parts. Like Revit is done from concept design to like documentation. You can go for Revit. And for the for class detections and all, you can go for the Navis work. So everything you are uh, providing on cloud. So the cloud is the, uh, like if I talk about common data environment is the most important thing for the, BIM workflow so that you can uh, deliver the project on time. So this is the, uh, like, this was the explained by the uh, Minesha and Nitishama. Now let's discuss more into, uh, like, from the Revit model, what all you can generate easily. So in, like, if you are developing the central model, that is landscape central model, so we can actually go for, like, uh, generate the piping layout, your different sections, landscape sections, lighting layout, like street lights, how it will be placed, your BOQs, planting requirement, like uh, material takeoff, planting uh, schedules, your structural uh, details, like if you're providing like, uh, retaining walls and foundations, right? Electrical layouting, master plan, that means the site plan and the construction details, right? Now let's see how we can develop the, uh, in the Revit. So first of all, from the life cycle of the uh, landscape, uh, main thing is the survey. So from surveyor, you get some certain information uh, of the site, like let's say through DWG files or through uh, maybe a point file that is CSV files. So how you can actually develop the uh, cut and fill volume, that is the main thing. Because one uh, one thing is your, like you are giving, you are, you have the existing site and the site design that you are going for is the proposal. So you can easily go for the cut and fill volume and then you can design the, uh, you can start with the designing procedure. So for that, I'll be using Revit 2024. So because current version like Revit 2024 onwards now, uh, the um, with new features, the landscape part has become very much e like very much easier. So that is why like I'll show you this. So in 2024, topo surface has been called as topo solids. So let's see how this actually beneficial in landscape design. So I'll go for the new project. Right. So first of all, if I get any information, like if any landscape architect uh, gets the information from the surveyor uh, through DWG file or through CSV file, so we can actually uh, create the site according to that. So first of all, we need to link the CAD. So I'll be linking that.
So this is the, uh, let's suppose this is the site software, the existing site, which I got from the site server. Now I'll be using it to create the site. And the benefit of the using topo solid is like you will get the equal layers like uh, just like uh, actual layers like uh, how the grass has been like uh, we'll, it will be created in layers. So the detailing in landscape will become very much easier. So you can see we have the grass layer, sand layer and earth layer. So how much uh, like sand is you have provided like how much Grassing. So by default, uh, from the service survey data, we actually get the brown data, right? Uh, brown site, right? Brown site. So, uh, if I'm, uh, if uh, we are planning, uh, go, if we are planning to go for the new uh, site proposal, like creating the landscape, so we need different materials, right? So let's say if I'm uh, developing the path, uh, pathways, or maybe like uh, softscape, so we can actually. Uh, develop different layers in this. So this is the existing site. So we have to mention it. Uh, so over here, the phases comes. So once you got the uh, information from the site surveyor, so we have to uh, inform, like we have to tell that uh, to Revit that this is the existing site. And then we need to go for the site proposal. So I'll be creating it so that uh, we can get the exact duplicate replica of the existing site and then we can modify it. Now, if you have any excavations or any, uh, so right now you can see we have two sites over here. One is the existing site. And one is the new duplicate site that will be considered as your site proposal. And if you have the any excavation, like if you are de developing the uh, site for any group housing or any like any project, right? Or if you are developing the park also, the recreational areas. So again, like some uh, activities going on there, like some like excavation is there, uh, happening there for like water body, for inst water installation features or for pathways. So if you have any excavations, you can do that. So for that, what I'll do, so I can increase the earth layer. Now I'll be providing excavations. And how much uh, the excavation will be down? So, right, and then we can go for the so you can see the red part is uh, is what the demolished part, right? So now once it is created like the excavation you have provided in your site proposal so over here so the net cut and fill volume is being calculated over here right right
and then we can go for the uh, like extracting the schedules and quantities for that. So I'll go for uh, the units so that uh, the discipline, uh, the decimal needs to be provided. And let's modify some of the uh, points. I'll be modifying the so that I can get the filling right now, if I go to the schedules and quantities, so you can see over here, uh, the new existing site is always zero, right? Because uh, that is existing site. And the one that you have provided as the proposal. So over here, you can see how much fill it needs to be required. So if it's in the minus stage, so it's like fill minus cut. So if you have the negative uh, value, so that means uh, like, Cutting should be done to reach out, uh, up to that level. So that is why uh, this net, net cut and fill volume, you can uh, use schedule for that. Or if you select the proposal, the site proposal over here, you can see it has been calculated over here. So it, it is much more easier if I talk about like 2020 in 2024, right? So, Now, if I talk about the um, different aspects of landscape, so that is like placement of uh, uh, like creation of hardscapes and softscapes and your like uh, providing plantations, right? So for that, I'll go to the uh, project that we have uh, like developed for this webinar only. So this is the group housing project like in which we have uh, like focused on this part of the landscape. So as you can see, we have different water features. So like to develop this kind of uh, structure. So first of all, like how how you can actually go for the uh, like softscapes and hardscapes. So everything is actually created using the by default components that we have like floors, walls, right? So, so let me open that site plan. Right? So over here, if you see over, you know, see these details. So if I want to create this part of uh, the landscape, so I need to because this is the topo solid. So if I want to create this kind part, uh, this part of pathway. Right, so I'll just go for the
So if you have the uh, reference files um, in CAD, you can actually go for that. Otherwise, you can directly design in Revit. So as you can see over here, so let me provide over here. So now if I cut a section, and go for the fine level detailing. So you can see over here, the various layers are coming over here. So that means if I go for uh, like details, so you can see like uh, how pathways will be created. Like if you have the uh, concrete layering and then sand layering. So like aggregate base and uh, dense aggregate, your sand base and then your uh, pavers, right? So all these informations you can get through much like uh, the material quantification can also be done very quickly through Revit, right? As well as the plant plantation. So the plantation is major uh, role over here. Like what type of plants you will be uh, placing in your project, right? So if I talk about the plantation, right? Right, so if I'm placing any plants, right? So first of all, like for landscape uh, designers, landscape architects, the major information for plantation is the common uh, names, botanical names, their cost, their quantities, how much quant uh, quantities they need for the site, right? So they provide an Excel information, like Excel sheet. So this kind of Excel sheet, they, prov uh, they actually develop and they actually give the codes right, different codes so that they can actually go and provide tags and through like from there, they can uh, create the schedules, right. So in Revit, first of all, you need to develop the certain families, the certain, uh, so these are your Revit components. So when you install, like when you install Revit, all the, like all the material libraries and your 3D components, especially like uh, street furniture, your street lightings, as well as some plantations will be in, uh, will be given to you. So they are actually already there in your Revit component library. But if I talk about the standards, so Revit is actually foreign software. So by default, you don't have the Indian based standards uh, in Revit. So it is actually upcoming developed, like they are developing currently. So that is why you can develop your own. You can develop your own material library, uh, let's say for pathways. So I've provided the pathways, the paver material from Kajaria tile. So I need, I had to create them using certain parameters, right? So I need to check their proportions, the, like you can see over here. So if I, so like, uh, just from the catalog, we needed the images, proper images of the material. We needed just the image as well as the size of the image was uh, required. And how the pattern will look like the hatch pattern if I talk about in AutoCAD terms, the uh, hatch pattern. So, so that uh, if we go for the... Uh, like hardscape, like finish working drawing, right? Where we actually provide the uh, like tile pattern, right? So that also uh, is important, right? Now for uh, like, you can provide uh, textures mappings also so that again, it will look realistic, right? So this is important for um, creating the main uh, like model, BIM, min, BIM, uh, BIM model, right? And like it actually helps in quantification as well. So if you're providing, let's say, uh, pavers like 12 mm pavers or like 12 mm tile work, right? So 
according to that you will get the quantifications the number of tiles required the number of like uh, the number of tiles required and how mm, how will be the like what will be the quantity like what will be the amount total amount so you can actually get the quantities as well so the cost information is important over here Next, next thing is your content library. So by default, uh, you will know for landscape design as well, like uh, there is no Indian uh, based, Indian standard based plantations. So we have to develop it. So some of them like are there just like uh, we have hydrangea, magnolia, right? And other plantations. So you can actually provide them by how so first of all you need to load them so i'll be loading the families and those are actually rpc so uh, when you see in the plan you will see the plantation symbol in elevation you will be seeing the ele elevation in a 2d form but if I talk about in 3D, you will see the image that is getting like that is uh, actually rotating according to like when you rotate your project, when you go for the orbit, right? So let's go for plantation. So we have all these uh, over here sub uh, divided into deciduous, like evergreen, conifer, fall, right? So if I talk about deciduous, So now if I want to load them, so first of all, I need to choose which, um, like which plantation I'll be requiring in my site. So there, they have the common name. So if I talk about palm tree, so in palm tree, so you can see like, uh, for your schedules, like what all information you need in your project, you can provide that over here. So through different, uh, through the work of parameters. So if I select any uh, plant and if I go to edit family. So these are the important information like uh, for BIM model, na, for BIM uh, workflow, uh, like you are using only one, uh, uh, like only one software, for conceptual, for documentations, you are using Revit. So all the information that you need for landscaping design, uh, you are providing in Revit. Similarly, like uh, for plantation as well, like common name, botanical name, your uh, crown diameter. So everything you are providing over here, right? And then it will be reflecting to your schedules. And if I go to schedule, you will see the full schedule like this. So you can give the code in like a, a codes to your plantations, your crown data and crown diameter, like spread, how much spread, right? You can provide that your total quantities and rate per tree, how much uh, quant like how much cost it is and total. So you can actually total them out. Right. And after this, if you want to tag them according to the codes, you can do that. So let's see how. So if I want to provide tagging over here. So I need to first develop this uh, family for uh, plantations so that we can uh, tag them according to the codes, plantation codes. So. First of all, I need to load them. Right. So some of you might uh, and like uh, show like uh, might understand uh, or we can say like some of you might have a question like 
uh, where is that uh, like from where the botanical name and codes came so we have created the parameters according to the planting schedule so again uh, like for you all you can develop your parameters you can develop your families according to the information like if if you are going for the uh, landscape projects so what what information you want what information you want in your project so you have developed multiple projects so what all information you require so you need to create the parameters for that so let's say for planting schedule you need botanical name you need codes you need di crown diameter so by default those parameters are not here in revit so you have to create them so that is why we have cre created several parameters extra parameters for schedule point of view right so right now it is actually tagging according to the Like if I go to edit type, so we can actually control like what information we want in working drawings, um, like while tagging the plantations. So I can go to edit label. Now you can see over here the parameter, the parameter that I have created is not here. That is code. So we can actually create that over here using shared parameters. So I'll create that. Let's load this into the project. So you can see over here, uh, now if I want to place all the tags at the same time, or you can provide the multi-leaders, like in AutoCAD we have multi-leaders. So again, like from one tag, you can actually tag all the same plantations or can go for tag all the plantations in one go like this so as you can see we have various kind of plantations like palm trees like hibiscus like so all these contains different different codes so you can actually provide that or either like you can create blow ups like for depend like blow ups for each and every main areas and then you can go for the working drawings right so once this is done once the modeling has been done the major thing is like providing sheets right so you can actually create your own title block so over here we have created a new title block for this project and which has the com which has our company logo so if i open that sheet so this is the sheet that we have created and you can actually uh, provide those informations right so first of all i need to duplicate it And then let's provide the information in the sheet. And then we can actually compose them. So if you have uh, like uh, different blow ups, so you can actually uh, uh, compose it and provide the key plan. So sheet is like uh, in which if you see over here, it actually acts as a viewport, right? So again all the scales all the information like you are providing over here the client name the who uh, who is the like uh, author like who is the uh, 
who has uh, drawn these sheets, right? All the sheet name details, and if you have any current revision, so you can provide those informations as well in your sheet. So like if you have your sheet layout developed in AutoCAD, from that also you can develop your uh, sheet in Revit, right? So all these informations you have developed. Now, the main thing is like, for BIM collaboration, like for BIM workflow, the main thing is like if multiple people are working in this project, so how they can access the same uh, information. So for that, collaboration takes place, right? So if you see over here, like if I um, if I'm working with multiple people in this project, so uh, this project is saved on cloud. That is common data environment, right? So in that, like if I need, if I have done some changes, I just need to synchronize. And then I need to publish all those uh, updations. So once I pub publish, it will be visible on cloud that is on ACC environment. So first of all, you need to specify what sheets, like if you want to uh, specify specific information that should be visible on cloud only. So you can actually uh, choose set of drawings. Like I want only some sheets to be visible on cloud. And then we need to synchronize them. So till this is done, let's uh, answer certain questions. So uh, the elements, uh, like if you have different levels, so you can choose basic uh, like one basic level and then uh, the high difference you can develop through providing uh, like level offset like offset from the host off offset from the level so that option you have in every element so you can provide that one main level you can create and uh, for further difference height you can actually provide that option right so let's see so this is your, uh, this is the um, ACC environment in which you can see over here. So when like you can actually create the folder structure according to the project lifecycle. And once this is done, you can provide access, like you can provide permissions who can work on uh, the same project, can work on who will be seeing the information, right? So if I open that same project, So you can see over here to uh, like sheets as well as 3D views are uh, perfectly visible over here. Now you can see what all views we have created in 3D uh, like in sheets, like in uh, the Revit are there. Like we have this entry view, West entry view, your OAT. So for OAT, like uh, this question, like uh, for OAT as well, like uh, we have made uh, made the bottom level of the, uh, like we have created one level for OAT, that is bottom level of OAT. And then we provided height offset from the level, like for uh, different steps. So you don't have to, like if you have multiple different, uh, like variations in levels so you can create main level and then you can provide height variations like you can go for the uh, offset from level right right so these are all rpcs like uh, you can see in 3d how they are visible like but in if i talk about in realistic mode when you go for the rendering point of view it will be it will look like this
So I'll open it over here as well. So uh, for ACC, you will have to have the strong internet. Uh, only then you will be able to view the files if you don't have Revit. So this cloud platform is actually like very much useful while go for like accessing all the information and this has actually um, unlimited amount of access like unlimited amount of storage so you can actually provide any information so you can see how your views are actually visible over here right Same goes for all the information that you have created, like working drawings, your plantation schedules, uh, as well as the cover page, like where we have the main site plan and the plantation legend. So uh, in Revit, the important thing is like, uh, you if you are developing families, if you are developing the Revit families for different plantations, you can create legends also. The plantation legend is actually important, like what type of plants you have created and how their plans are actually visible. So you can create the plantation legend as well as all the specific details. Like this is the detail for palm uh, tree, right? So how it is actually placed on the hard scale. So those details also can be created. So like again, uh, you have vast amount of uh, like vast amount uh, you can actually develop working drawings in vast degree, right? And uh, if I say for working drawings for like for full project, right? For BIM workflow, Revit is actually helping you in developing all these informations in no time. And through common data environment, that is ACC environment, Autodesk Construction Cloud, you are delivering that project on time without any delay. And you are actually collaborating with different disciplines easily. Collaborating with the uh, within the team and coordinating with uh, different consultants, like uh, MEP consultants, right? Easily, right? So, right? Now, if you see over here, so this is the uh, main like product that we got from the like uh, Revit. So you can see over here, this is the realistic view of the full landscape, like how they have planted. Like So you can see these are all only images. So if you rotate your uh, model, if you rotate your view, it your uh, you it will be like your images are actually rotating, but they are not. So they it is actually RPC. So two type of plantations you can create. You can create uh, like three D geometries, like uh, solid work, or just like these RPCs. Uh, again, like if you create complex geometries, it it makes your model heavier. So that is why like these rpcs have you know, been provided to you so that it will your model will be light and it like in render appearance you can sh check how your plantations are actually looking right so now if i talk about the plantation legend so i'll show you the cover page of the project So this is the main cover page. As you can see, we have created the legend and these are all the families that I've, uh, that we have provided in the project only. So we, we didn't have, like, we don't have to create again in the project. These are the loadable families. These are the families that we have uh, like placed on the project, placed in the project. Now we have provided as a component, like as legend component over here. over here and if you want it's a uh, like elevation view so i just need to ch change the elevation so again like this every like this has been created separately 
in a family template and we have loaded it into project and then we provided it the legend and we like we place the symbol like we place the legend component right? that's it so like um only families like main main thing is like you are providing efforts in the modeling part like the basic part right after documentations like uh, your documentations your detailed um part like so it becomes very much easier right so this is so this comes like um, now we have we are coming to the end of the webinar so let's discuss if you have any questions so i think some of you have some questions right so i have answered few and i think so if you have any doubts you can provide them over here um we let's have a quick question and answer uh, part Okay, so for Revit attached model, like uh, when you uh, like, first of all, it always better to develop the site in a separate uh, file and uh, the mean the let's say group housing project needs to be linked uh, on that site so the excavation and all will be uh, uh, like the site will be cut in the main site model where you have developed the site and using like you have different uh, tools for that like for cutting the site you have uh, your uh, model in place families or massing tool so you can just go for void creation and that's it you can cut the site easily so uh, like uh, because like uh, if i talk about building part uh, like if some of you have uh, been through revit uh, to in, like till 2023 so if you have uh, uh, understood the like if you have uh, done work some some work in topo surface you might know that building pad was there but in 2024 because of certain like limitations building pad is now disabled so for creating um for cutting the site for uh, showing the excavation details you can go for massing you can go for model in place uh, families just go for the void family Okay. Okay. So, uh, for plumbing again, um, like for plumbing part, if I talk about like plumbing, uh, template will be different. So this will be completely, um, uh, like uh, completely in control, uh, to like in control, uh, so it will be like uh, according to the. MEP consultants, so it is actually work for the MEP consultants, right? So again, like for excavations and all, they will be using by default components in Revit and through Topo Solids, it is now much more easier to uh, work in the plumbing part as well. Okay, so as I told you, like by default, no, uh, for native Indian trees and shrubs, there are no such libraries, you have to develop it. But if you have the plan and like plan symbol, your elevation symbol with you, uh, what you need to do, you can just uh, go for the RPC, like the RPC should be similar to that, but your plan and elevation should be perfect. Right. So mm, only you can do that uh, like this, but uh, like Indian plants and shrubs are actually developing. So in I think in uh, near future versions, you will get to see the Indian uh, standard 
plantations right so i think this is for today right so thank you everyone for joining the session and uh, So RPC doesn't make uh, your model heavy. If you develop the shrubs in three in three D geometry, that makes the model heavy. Right. So yes, this was the last question. Now, if you have any questions, you can provide them over here. So last but not the least, let's uh talk about the programs that we have. So one is BIM for design. We are actually focused on design workflow and project delivery, and Approx 180 hours, like four months, uh, this is the course. So it is actually certified course. And uh, like all the information that we have discussed today are, are uh, yeah. So all the informations are discussed over here uh, are uh, uh, like actually explained in this course, uh, Revit basic. So, uh, like now, uh, yes. So, Revit basic, intermediate, and advanced we'll cover. So, everything that is like plantation schedule and all the families that we can create are actually discussed over here. The Navis Works, Autodesk Docs, BIM Collaborate Pro. Again, the cloud uh, environment also will be discussed. The Dynamo for um, quant like for automations, right? Inside BIM standards, and uh, now uh. Uh, if you register before 31st December 2023 for the next year's batch, you will save an extra 10,000 rupees. So early bird registration. So registration program fees till December 2023 is 50, is 50,000 inclusive GST. And registration program fees from January onwards 2024 is 60,000 inclusive GST. So... Uh, if you want to understand more about like BIM process, go for this course. And like, so we have another program that is BIM Guru. So in BIM Guru, uh, this is actually for corporates, right? Uh, we actually provide a one year service contract, 40 hours tool training and uh, 50 hours of troubleshooting and 1000 plus Revit content library. So we actually, uh, like if you have custom um, families, like Indian families, Indian standard libraries, like Indian plantations will be actually developed, uh, will help you in developing that, right? And uh, for MP as well, like if you want to check out the like plumbing layout for like how uh, plumbing and work for the contours and all. So this, will be help uh, in you. So like will be helpful for you. BIM for MP it is actually, uh, it is one stop solution for design, modeling, fabrication, and collaboration for various building services. BIM tools covered, again, Revit, MAP, basic, advanced, and inter basic, intermediate, and advanced, yeah. Navis works, Dynamo, and again, cloud, right? So, cloud environment like ACC, ACC Docs, BIM Collaborate Pro. So if you want to discuss more about that, so you can actually connect it over here, connect at the rate capricot right? So now, so let's end the session here. Thank you everyone for coming, for joining the session. So yes, thank you.